Good. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Good to be back in front of you guys. Good Coach, back. good to see you. Um, yeah, it's good to see you. Been, since the depth chart has, has come out, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about that nose tackle spot. Yeah. Um, can you just talk about how Tell has made improvement in that competition between he and Lole? Well, I, I say this. Uh, uh, Desmond has done a tremendous job since, you know, uh, the end of last year. You know, all the spring ball, all the summer. Uh, and he just continued to work his butt off. And, and I think, you know, with one thing with, uh, with Jermaine is, uh, you know, he was a little injured early on in camp uh, and just now getting back into, uh, you know, kind of football shape uh, and getting into the, uh, the swing of things, how we do things here. And, uh, uh, and it's going to be a great sight to see on Saturday. Both of those guys trotting out. And Jermaine is, he's coming along, coming along. And, uh, you know, that could, uh, you know, trend in another way later on. But as of right now, Desmond Tell has, uh, has won that job over him. But you'll see a lot of Jermaine on Saturday. Brian, you, you talked pre-camp about the newcomers mm -hmm. creating competition. Now that camp is over, how much did the newcomers help the guys coming back get better? Oh, it man, seems I like some of those older guys are on that depth chart, even even with those new guys. Uh, I think it, it helped out a whole lot, Jody. Uh, I mean, I really did. Uh, for those guys to come in here and create that competition uh, that the the older guys knew was, I, I better be on my A game, uh, because if I'm not on my A game, my spot may be taken. And uh, so that, that has helped out so much, and that created competition uh, uh, against the offense as well. You know, the guys are giving everything they have. Uh, you know, and I think the other thing is, you're seeing a lot more guys in this building too watching film. And, and so that helps. And uh, uh, when you get great competition on the football field, that, that only uh, shows you that you're going to have a pretty good football team uh, on both sides of the football. And, and I think that's what we're seeing right now come to fruition uh, with all the transfers that we have right now. Yeah, Coach, you, I believe you've limited them to one field goal in the last two games you played them. How were you able to do that, and how is the challenge different uh, this Saturday? Well, well, I think one thing is, uh, you know, our, our guys were uh, just very in tune to, to the game. I think the coaches did a great job with the game plan and, and implementing and practicing well. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, some of it, you know, may have to do with some of the injuries that they had, you know, up front, uh, you know, and things of that nature, uh, you know, that we were able to get in the backfield a lot and be able to stop the running game. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, this past season, uh, you know, was a was a good test. They, they needed one game to go to be bowl eligible, you know, when they got ready to play us and, and and had to, you know, one of the best rushing attacks in the country, you know, and the best running back in the country, one of them, and uh, a quarterback that can run the football. And uh, so I think our guys did a great job of stopping the run game uh, and trying to make them one-dimensional and uh, throwing the football. And, uh, and and that's what helped us last year. I think this year, first game of the season, so everybody's healthy, you know, for the most part. And, uh, and, and what they did in the past in the running game, um, you know, at, at Syracuse uh, was really good. So I, I expect those guys to uh, continue to do some of the things, if not majority of the things that they did in the run game, um, because, I mean, they were, what, number two in the country, uh, number one in the in the ACC in rushing. Um, you know, the quarterback ran for a lot of yards this past season as well. He was one, I think, maybe number two uh, as far as, uh, you know, rushing yards and rushing touchdowns this past season. Uh, so I expect them to continue that. Uh, but I think the passing game will be totally different. You know, I think the passing game will be UVA's passing game. Uh, they were, you know, one of the top five in the country in passing. So uh, I would expect Robert to, uh, you know, implement his passing game as well as some little wrinkles here and there, uh, you know, in the run game. Uh, that, you know, will um, uh, will be a little bit different than what Syracuse has, has been accustomed to in the last couple of years. So uh, we're, we're excited for the challenge, and uh, we look forward to it, and, and we'll see what they have those first couple of series uh, on Saturday. Coach, where do you feel like you all can be more aggressive this year? What what particular group? And, and I guess thinking about the, the pass rush that you had mm -hmm. last year, you know, where do you feel like that could take another step? Well, I think with uh, the, the first thing is uh, I always look at it um, uh, this way. Um, you know, the pass rush is in, indicative of coverage and the coverage is indicative of pass rush. And so I think with the guys we have, you know, within our building right now, uh, you know, you see some tighter coverage, you know, tighter windows, even within our zone concepts. Um, you know, uh, now the quarterback has to hold on to the football a little bit longer and now your pass rush can get there. So many times last year that, 
that we may have been right there. You know, I mean, it'd been a, a split second. It's a sack or a sack calls fumble, uh, you know, but now the, t- the coverage can be a little bit tighter. And I think that's going to help us with our pass rush. Uh, but the more aggressive group, uh, you know, I would say coming out of fall camp uh, will be our defensive line as well as our linebackers. Uh, those guys have, have been really aggressive. Uh, I think in the secondary, uh, our guys, the guys that have come, come along and, uh, you know, the transfer guys have done a tremendous job of, uh, you know, uh, uh, challenging receivers and, and being in a lot tighter coverage. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm able to sleep at night some, uh, you know, with some of the guys we have. So it's, uh, it's, it's great, great to have and uh, look forward to Saturday. Yeah, I guess, Brian, to bounce off that, because of, you could say, everything from the offseason mm-hmm. and the talk, how hungry is this group to get on the field and to try to make a statement and prove, you could say, what type of uh, defense it's going to be? Well, I, I think they're very, very hungry. Uh, you know, I think last year, uh, when you look at overall, uh, you, you're missing some key pieces. You're missing Cotrell Clark, who was, you know, second-team All-ACC player. You're missing, you know, one of your best playmakers in Money Montgomery. Um, you know, and, and losing those two guys who are two, two leaders of the group, uh, uh, it, it hurt us. It hurt us tremendously. And uh, so I think especially those two guys, they're, they're ready to get out and prove something. Uh, but I think as an overall group, uh, you know, our guys just want to come out and, and, and have fun and, and, and be a great discipline defense and uh, come out and, and show that we can be one of the best defenses in the country uh, when we do things the right way. And, uh, uh, and, and we've seen that so far, so fall camp. And uh, so we're ready to showcase it for the world. Brian, obviously Syracuse doesn't have any film so far this season, but so when you're kind of in film study, how much of it is kind of breaking down Syracuse themselves kind of run heavy and how much of it is kind of looking at Virginia and how pass heavy they were? I think it's just a little bit of a mixture of both, um, you know, because like you said, I mean, that, those guys did a tremendous job running the football last year. I mean, one of the best in the country, in the conference and country, um, you know, and Sarah and, and, and UVA did a great job in the passing game, you know, with what they had. And so, you, you know, you bring in, you know, your quarterback's coach, and receiver coach over in OC. Uh, so, you know, I would expect those guys to do, you know, some similar things uh, with, with Virginia. Uh, but you got to think Dino's an offensive guy as well, you know. And, and so, um, you know, I could see them using some things that have hurt us in the past or, uh, you know, from, from our games in the past in 2019-18. Uh, I mean, not 18, but uh, 2019 and 20. So uh, it's a little mixture of both. So we've been uh, trying to do the best we can to kind of put a little bit of both uh, taste in, uh, in, and, on the football field. And just a quick follow-up, when kind of breaking down that Syracuse film, who kind of stands out on offense not named Sean Tucker? Uh, the quarterback. I mean, Gary Schroeder is a is an unbelievable talent. And when, when he pulls that ball down, whether it's from drop back pass and running the football or any Q design runs, he, he can run. I mean, he can run with the best of them. I'm, I'm Pretty sure he's probably a 4-4 kid, a uh, long strider that can run. Uh, as well as, you know, people don't give him a lot of credit for throwing the football. I think he throws the ball well. You know, I think he does a great job with uh, with his back shoulder, quick throws, even down the field throws. I mean, the the, 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 the long touchdown that he threw against uh, Virginia Tech last year uh, to win the game in the slot, I mean, that was perfect. And he's getting ready to get drilled. And he stood in there and took it, you know. Uh, but he's a tough kid. He's really, he really is. And I look at, uh, you know, the Courtney Jackson kid that's in a slot that, uh, you know, that they'll probably move him around in multiple ways uh, with with uh, Robert's, uh, you know, offense. Uh, he's a great talent that can run, can run, uh, as well as you know, get open in the passing game. Um, you know, you look at Alford, uh, 82, uh, a long receiver that can, can can stretch the field. You know, and I think uh, he gives you a big target. Uh, and then looking at some of the things what they have on their depth chart with some of the tight ends and things that they will use, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but we look forward to it and can't wait for the challenge on Saturday. Brian, you guys had a lot of success against Sean Tucker. He's mm-hmm. obviously one of the, the best running backs in the AC. What is the key to defending him and kind of containing him as much as you possibly can? Well, I think the biggest thing is to get to him before he gets going. And uh, if you can do that, uh, you know, and and limit uh, the space that you have in between him uh, and and yourself as a tackler, uh, it gives you a better chance to to, to possibly end up tackling and and getting that win on that down. Uh, But we just have to do a great job of gang tackling Sean. I mean, because he's an explosive runner. I mean, one of the best in ACC, uh, one of the best in the country. Uh, so if we can continue to do that and win up front and win in the trenches uh, and get our linebackers in the backfield, I think we'll have a pretty good day uh, stopping the run if we can do so. Um, so we just got to limit the space in between us and the ball carrier. Coach. The uh, noise level in the dome has always been a – well, not always, but has often been a factor mm-hmm. in Louisville games. Is there any way you 
uh, you can prepare people? Is that uh, even possible? Well, I think for us defensively, I don't know if it'll be as loud because I think they want their offense to be able to hear and communicate. Uh, but just in general, I would say uh, anytime you're playing inside of a dome, uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be pretty loud, especially the way. Uh, and the only thing I think you can do is, you know, sometimes you can go inside and just crank the music up as loud as you possibly can. And uh, and hopefully, you know, you can get the communication, your hand signals. Uh, and, and I think what that does is just, uh, uh, you know, make the guys study a whole lot more to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing without some of the communication, you know, pieces that you will, you know, normally I could tell you, hey, you got to do this. But, hey, you, you won't be able to hear it because it's going to be so loud. Uh, so just cranking the music up uh, as loud as you possibly can uh, is probably the only thing that you can do to be able to practice for the Dome. Coach, uh, <laughs> you, you took over. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's, now you got to tell me what, what what's the deal with that joke. My name's my name's Kent. His yeah. name is Clinton Clinton Warren Spencer the third. You want to see my ID? <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> you, you took over a historically bad defense. Yes, here. sir. So it's been a long road to this point. Is this as confident as you've been going into a season that the guys will be able to execute what you want them to on the field? Absolutely. Uh, I think uh, this is going into year four. Uh, you know, coming here, I, we, we knew it was going to be a challenge uh, defensively to to build this defense into, uh, you know, what we wanted it to look like. And uh, we knew it wasn't going to be an overnight success. Uh, you know, but we knew that we had to, uh, you know, uh, take our bumps and bruises, uh, you know, so far on, on down the road. Uh, but we knew at the end that, you know, we were going to have what we need uh, defensively. And I, this is the most confident I've been. Uh, and I think this is the most confident this group has been defensively, uh, that they can go out and, and execute and compete at a high level. Uh, and they feel like, hey, we deserve to be on the same playing field as everybody else. So uh, this is the most, uh, most uh, exciting uh, as well as, um, you know, uh, uh, confident that we've felt since we've been here. Brian, you mentioned the injuries that you guys suffered last year, Monty being one of the critical ones. Mm -hmm. How has he looked in fall camp, and, and how do you feel about him coming into this, this season in this first week? Money is money. That sucker is he's probably talking – crap to somebody right now uh number one walking through the building uh but I, I feel great money walked into our defensive staff room this morning uh you know uh all wide-eyed bushy-tailed you know and uh you know coming around giving everybody on the defensive staff high fives and he's excited you know he's excited for the opportunity to get back on the football field to uh you know show the fans and show uh scouts you know uh, you know what he can do, you know, that he's back. And uh, uh, so I'm excited for him. He, he's done a heck of a job, uh, not only just, uh, you know, on the football field, but just leading, you know. I mean, you, you missed that leadership from him last year on the football field. You know, when things go wrong, I mean, it's going to be time Saturday where we'll strike some adversity. Uh, and when you look out there on the field and you have, you know, Money Montgomery, uh, Cottrell Clark, you know, Kendrick Duncan, Momo, those guys will be able to settle that defense down. And uh, not only just the defense, but I think team in general. Uh, so we're excited to have money back and can't wait to uh, see him perform on Saturday as well as the rest of the season. Good. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.